I decided to go hiking alone one weekend. I heard about this trail in the mountains that was supposed to be tough but beautiful. I packed my stuff, filled my water bottles, and left early in the morning to avoid the midday heat. The trail started off easy, with a gentle slope and wide paths. The fresh mountain air was refreshing, and the sounds of nature were calming. As I climbed higher, the trail became steeper and narrower. I had to watch my steps to avoid slipping on the loose dirt. Despite the effort, the views were amazing. I could see miles of thick forest below me, and the distant mountains looked awesome against the clear blue sky. After a couple of hours, I reached a fork in the trail. There was no sign showing which way to go, but I remembered reading that the left path led to a great viewpoint. I decided to go left. As I walked, the trail became harder to see, and the plants got thicker. I started to worry that I had taken the wrong path. But I really wanted to reach the viewpoint, so I kept going. The trail eventually disappeared completely, and I found myself pushing through thick bushes. I was sure I was lost. My heart started pounding, and I felt a growing sense of panic. I tried to go back the way I came, but everything looked the same. The trees closed in around me, and the sky above was just a thin strip of blue. I checked my phone, but there was no signal. I kept walking, hoping to find the main trail again. I marked my path as best as I could, breaking small branches and remembering unusual trees or rocks. Hours passed, and I was exhausted. My water was running low, and I hadn't eaten since breakfast. Just as I was starting to lose hope, I stumbled upon a small clearing. In the middle was an old, weathered sign pointing back towards the main trail. Relief washed over me, and I felt my spirits lift. I followed the direction indicated, and after about half an hour, I found myself back on a well-worn path. The rest of the hike was uneventful, but I couldn't shake the feeling of how close I had come to real trouble. When I finally made it back to the trailhead, the sun was setting. I took a moment to appreciate the beauty around me and to be thankful that I had made it out safely. As I sat there, catching my breath, I heard a rustling in the bushes nearby. I froze, thinking it might be an animal. But then I saw a figure emerge, a man in dirty clothes with a wild look in his eyes. He stared at me for a moment before turning and disappearing back into the woods. I quickly packed up and hurried to my car, my heart racing. Driving away. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The man's image stayed in my mind, and I realized how close I had come to a different kind of danger. The mountains are beautiful, but they hide their secrets well. I learned to respect their power and to always be prepared for the unexpected. I decided to go on a solo hike last weekend. The weather was perfect, clear skies and a light breeze. I had my backpack filled with basics, water, snacks, a first aid kit, and my phone. The trail I picked was known for its great views and was moderately tough, just the kind of adventure I wanted. As I started my hike, everything seemed calm. The path was clear, and the forest around me was full of the sounds of birds and rustling leaves. I felt at ease, enjoying being alone and connecting with nature. After about an hour, I reached a fork in the trail. One path went up to a viewpoint, while the other went down into a thicker part of the forest. I chose the viewpoint, eager to see the wide landscape. The climb was steeper than I thought. My legs burned with each step, but I kept pushing forward, motivated by the thought of the view at the top. Finally, I reached the clearing and was rewarded with an amazing sight. Rolling hills stretched out before me, dotted with patches of trees and shining lakes. I stayed there for a while, taking in the scenery and catching my breath. After snapping a few photos, I decided to head back down. As I retraced my steps, I realized the trail seemed different. I hadn't noticed certain landmarks on my way up. My confidence started to waver but I told myself that I just needed to pay closer attention. The deeper I went, the more confused I became. Panic started to set in as I realized I was lost. The sun was beginning to set, 
and the forest grew darker by the minute. I pulled out my phone to check my location, but there was no signal. My heart raced, and I felt a knot of fear tighten in my stomach. I tried to stay calm, remembering the basic rules of survival. I had water and snacks, and I knew I had to find my way back to a familiar trail. I decided to follow the setting sun, hoping it would lead me west toward the trailhead. Hours passed, and I stumbled over roots and rocks, my exhaustion growing. Just when I was starting to lose hope, I spotted a faint trail marker in the dim light. Relief washed over me as I realized I had found a way out. I followed the markers carefully, and soon the path became more recognizable. Finally, I emerged from the forest and found myself back at the parking lot. I was dirty, tired, and shaken, but safe. The fear and confusion I had felt in the woods seemed to melt away in the glow of the streetlights. As I drove home, I reflected on my experience. It had been terrifying, but it taught me the importance of preparation and respect for nature. From that day forward, I promised myself to always hike with a detailed map, a compass, and a fully charged phone. The experience had been a wake-up call, but it also reaffirmed my love for the outdoors. I knew I'd be back on the trail soon, but with a lot more caution and respect for the wilderness. As I pulled into my driveway, I noticed something odd. There, on my back seat, was a small, dirt-covered object I hadn't seen before. It was a carved wooden figure, roughly shaped like a person, its eyes crudely etched out. My mind raced, trying to remember if I had picked it up during my hike, but I was certain I hadn't. A chill ran down my spine as I realized the figure wasn't there when I had left the forest. I quickly grabbed it, intending to toss it away, but a sudden thought stopped me. What if this was a warning? Or worse, what if it was left by someone, or something, watching me in the forest? I dropped the figure and slammed the car door shut hurrying into my house and locking the door behind me. That night, I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. Every creak and shadow in my house seemed amplified, and I lay awake, my mind replaying every step of my hike, wondering what had really happened out there. The next morning, I found the wooden figure on my front porch, sitting there as if it was waiting for me. My heart pounded in my chest. I realized that the forest held more secrets than I could ever imagine and my hike was just the beginning of something much darker. I had escaped the woods, but a part of it had followed me home. I always loved hiking. There was something about the peace, the fresh air, and the challenge of the trail that drew me in. One Saturday morning, I decided to explore a new trail I'd read about online. It was a bit out of the way, but the photos looked amazing, and the reviews praised its beauty and quiet. I packed my things, made sure my phone was fully charged, and set off early. The drive to the trail took about an hour, winding through thick forests and narrow, rough roads. When I finally arrived, I noticed there were no other cars in the small parking area. I shrugged it off, excited about having the trail to myself. The hike started out beautifully. The sun was shining, birds were singing, and the air was cool. I followed the marked path, which led me through different types of landscapes, thick woods, open meadows, and rocky areas with stunning views. About an hour into my hike, I came across a small stream. I stopped to take a drink and refilled my water bottle. It was then that I noticed something strange there were no sounds of animals. The birds had stopped singing, and the forest felt weirdly still. Pushing aside the creeping unease, I kept going. As I climbed higher, the trail became narrower and rougher. At one point, I had to climb over some large rocks. That's when I saw it, a torn piece of fabric caught on a thorn bush. It looked like it had come from a backpack or a jacket. It was old and dirty, but fresh enough to suggest that someone had passed this way recently. I felt a chill run down my spine. I hadn't seen anyone all day, and the idea that someone else might be out here, possibly in trouble, made me uneasy. I pressed on, my senses now heightened. Every rustle of leaves, every crack of a branch, made me jump. Eventually, 
I reached a fork in the trail. The map I had printed showed only one path, but here were two. One path looked well used, while the other was overgrown and barely visible. I decided to take the well-used path, hoping it would lead me to a clearing or another landmark. As I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. My footsteps seemed unnaturally loud in the silence. After another twenty minutes, I saw something up ahead, a small, abandoned campsite. There was a collapsed tent, a rusted camping stove, and a few scattered belongings. It looked like it had been there for months, maybe even years. I carefully approached, looking for any signs of recent activity. There were none. It was as if whoever had been here had simply vanished. My unease grew into a gnawing fear. I decided it was time to turn back. I didn't want to risk getting lost or running into whoever, or whatever, had left that campsite. Retracing my steps, I tried to stay calm. The forest, which had seemed so inviting in the morning, now felt oppressive and sinister. Every shadow seemed to hide something, and I quickened my pace. After what felt like an eternity, I finally reached the familiar stream where I'd stopped earlier. Relief washed over me. I was back on the right track. As I made my way back to the trailhead, I couldn't stop thinking about the torn fabric and the abandoned campsite. What had happened out there? I would probably never know, and maybe that was for the best. The important thing was that I made it back safely. When I finally emerged from the forest and saw my car, I felt a wave of relief. I quickly got in locked the doors, and started the engine. As I drove away, I glanced back at the trailhead, making a silent promise to myself to be more careful on future hikes. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept replaying the day's events in my mind, unable to shake the feeling that I had narrowly avoided something terrible. Just before I finally drifted off, I checked my phone one last time. There, in my photo gallery, was a picture I didn't remember taking, a dark, blurry image of the campsite, with a shadowy figure standing just at the edge of the frame. The weekend was supposed to be a simple camping trip to relax. I had packed my stuff, enough food and water, and headed to the forest. The weather was perfect, clear skies, a light breeze, and the sun setting in shades of orange and pink. I found a quiet spot near a stream and set up my tent. As night fell, I lit a campfire and sat by it, enjoying the peaceful sounds of nature. The rustling leaves, the distant hoot of an owl, and the crackling fire were soothing. After a while, I decided to head into my tent and get some sleep. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a strange noise. It was a rustling sound, not too far from my tent. At first, I thought it might be an animal, maybe a raccoon or a deer. I ignored it and tried to go back to sleep, but the sound continued. It was getting closer. I grabbed my flashlight and carefully unzipped the tent. Shining the light around, I couldn't see anything unusual. The noise stopped. Feeling relieved, I went back inside and lay down. But then I heard it again, closer this time. It sounded like footsteps, slow and steady. My heart started pounding. I held my breath and listened carefully. The footsteps circled my tent. I didn't dare move. The steps were heavy, not like any animal I knew. They paused right outside the tent, and I felt someone or something standing there. Suddenly, I remembered my car keys and the emergency whistle I had brought. Slowly, I reached for them. I blew the whistle as hard as I could the sound cutting through the night. The footsteps immediately stopped. I could hear the sound of running, heavy steps moving away from my tent, deeper into the woods. I didn't wait to find out what it was. I grabbed my essentials, threw them into my backpack, and rushed out of the tent. The moonlight was enough to guide me back to my car. I ran, adrenaline pumping through my veins, not looking back. When I finally reached my car, I jumped in, locked the doors, and drove away as fast as I could. The relief of being in a safe place was overwhelming. I drove straight home, not stopping until I was back in my driveway. The next morning, 
I called the park rangers and reported what had happened. They assured me they would check it out, but I never found out who or what was out there that night. All I knew was that I had narrowly escaped something or someone with bad intentions. The next few days were tense. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. Every noise, every shadow outside my window made me jump. I decided to avoid overnight camping alone from then on. Weeks later, I was in a coffee shop, scrolling through news on my phone. My heart skipped a beat when I saw the headline. Hiker found dead in woods, suspected foul play. The location was the same forest where I had camped. I couldn't read the details. I put my phone away, the reality of what I had narrowly escaped sinking in. It was a close call and I couldn't help but feel that whoever or whatever was out there that night was still lurking, waiting for another chance. The thought sent chills down my spine. I was grateful to be safe, but the fear never truly left me. It was a warm summer evening when I decided to go camping alone in the woods. I needed a break from the city and thought a night under the stars would be refreshing. I found a quiet spot by a small stream, set up my tent, and started a fire. As the sun went down, the forest around me got darker, and the sounds of nature filled the air. After a simple dinner, I sat by the fire, enjoying the crackling sound of the burning wood. The night was calm, but as it grew late, I started to feel uneasy. The forest, which had felt so peaceful during the day, now seemed alive with strange sounds. I tried to brush it off, telling myself it was just because I was alone in a place I didn't know well. I decided to go to bed. I crawled into my tent, sipped it up, and lay down on my sleeping bag. The sounds outside seemed to get louder. Twigs snapping, leaves rustling, everything felt closer. I told myself it was just animals and that I shouldn't worry. But then I heard footsteps. They were slow and steady, moving through the bushes. My heart pounded. I lay still, barely breathing, listening. The footsteps stopped right outside my tent. I could see a shadow through the thin fabric. Panic set in, but I knew I had to stay calm. I quietly reached for my flashlight and my camping knife, ready for anything. Minutes felt like hours. The footsteps started again, moving away from my tent. I stayed alert, listening closely. Eventually, the sounds faded into the distance. I didn't dare move until I was sure it was safe. Finally, the forest grew quiet again, except for the usual night noises. Morning couldn't come soon enough. When the first light of dawn broke, I slowly unzipped my tent and looked around. There was no sign of anyone. Relieved but still shaken, I quickly packed up my camp. As I was leaving, I noticed footprints in the dirt, human footprints. I hiked back to my car, thankful for the safety it offered. When I got home, I reported the incident to the local authorities. They assured me they would check it out, but I knew I'd never go camping alone again. The experience reminded me of the unpredictable dangers of the wilderness and the importance of being prepared. A few days later, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. At night, I would wake up to creaks and thumps in my house, sounds I had never noticed before. One evening, as I was about to fall asleep, I heard a faint scratching sound coming from my bedroom window. I got up to check, but there was nothing there. Weeks passed, and the uneasy feeling persisted. I installed security cameras around my house, hoping to catch whatever was causing the noises. One night, I reviewed the footage. There, in the dark, I saw a shadowy figure standing at the edge of my yard, staring directly at my house. It stayed for hours, barely moving, before disappearing just before dawn. I realized that whatever had been out there in the woods had followed me home. The thought sent chills down my spine. Even now, I don't feel entirely safe, knowing that something, or someone, might still be watching me. I decided to go camping alone to clear my head. 
I found a spot deep in the woods, far from any trails. The first day was peaceful. I set up my tent, gathered some firewood, and enjoyed the quiet. By nightfall, the forest was silent, with only the occasional rustle of leaves. On the second night, I woke up to a noise outside my tent. It sounded like footsteps, slow and careful. I grabbed my flashlight and shined it around, but saw nothing. The sound stopped, and I told myself it was just an animal. The next day, I went for a hike, but I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me. I kept looking over my shoulder but saw no one. When I got back to my campsite, I noticed small things were out of place. My water bottle was on the ground. My backpack was unzipped. It was unsettling, but I tried to brush it off. That night, I woke up again to the sound of footsteps, this time closer. My heart was pounding as I listened, straining to hear any movement. Then, something brushed against my tent. I froze, holding my flashlight tightly. The footsteps circled my tent, slow and careful. Suddenly, they stopped. I waited, barely breathing, for what felt like forever. Eventually, I heard the footsteps moving away into the forest. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. At dawn, I packed up my things quickly, eager to leave. As I hiked back to my car, I felt that same uneasy feeling of being watched. I quickened my pace, glancing around constantly. When I finally reached my car, I threw my gear in the back and locked the doors. I drove away, feeling a sense of relief as I put distance between myself and the woods. As I glanced in the rearview mirror one last time, I thought I saw a shadow slip back into the trees. My heart sank. I never found out who or what was out there, but I knew one thing for sure. I wouldn't be camping alone again anytime soon. The thought of those footsteps still sends chills down my spine, and I can't shake the feeling that something was out there, watching, waiting. It was late afternoon when I decided to take a walk in the forest nearby. The thick trees always gave me a cool break from the summer heat. I needed some time alone to clear my head. As I walked deeper into the forest, the sounds of the town faded away, replaced by the rustling leaves and the occasional bird chirping. The trail was familiar, but it felt different this time. Maybe it was the cloudy sky or the way the wind whispered through the branches, but something felt off. I brushed it off and continued, enjoying the quiet and the beauty around me. I must have walked for an hour when I realized I hadn't seen any of the usual spots. No fallen tree where I usually rested, no split in the path that led to the small stream. Panic started to creep in. I checked my phone, but there was no signal. The battery was low too. Great. I turned around, hoping to retrace my steps. Every tree looked the same. Every path seemed identical. The sky grew darker, and the once calming rustle of leaves now sounded creepy. My pace quickened as the unease turned into fear. I stumbled upon an old, abandoned cabin. It wasn't there before. I hesitated but decided to take a closer look, hoping to find some clue or even shelter for the night if needed. The door creaked as I pushed it open. Inside, the air was musty and the furniture was covered in dust and cobwebs. A broken chair, a rotting table, and shattered windows, it looked like it hadn't been used in years. I saw a map on the table, brittle and yellowed with age. To my surprise, it was a detailed layout of the forest. I traced my finger over the trails, trying to figure out my location. There was a red X, marked near the edge of the map, not too far from where I thought I was. Maybe it was a way out, a place to get my bearings. With new hope, I set out towards the X. The forest seemed even darker now, and I could barely see the path ahead. But I kept going, focusing on the map and the thought of getting home. Finally, I saw a break in the trees, light filtering through. I emerged from the forest into an open field. Relief washed over me as I saw the familiar outline of my town in the distance. I had made it out. The sense of dread that had clung to me lifted, replaced by a deep sense of gratitude. I learned my lesson that day. 
The forest was beautiful but could turn on you in an instant if you weren't careful. From then on, I always made sure to stick to the main trails and never ventured in without letting someone know where I was going. The experience stayed with me, a reminder of nature's power and my own vulnerability. As I walked towards the town, something made me glance back at the forest. In the distance, near the spot where I had emerged, I thought I saw a figure standing at the tree line. It was too far to make out clearly, but it looked like someone was watching me. I blinked, and the figure was gone. I shook my head, telling myself it was just my imagination. But the uneasy feeling returned, stronger than before. That night, as I lay in bed, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, had been in the forest with me. I thought about the cabin, the map, and the mysterious. X. I couldn't help but wonder if it had been a coincidence, or if I had stumbled upon something that was never meant to be found. In the days that followed, I avoided the forest. I stuck to the busy streets and well-lit parks. But every now and then, I'd catch a glimpse of the tree line in the distance, and a chill would run down my spine. I couldn't help but feel that the forest was waiting, watching, and that someday, it might call me back again. And if it did, I wasn't sure I'd be able to resist. I started my solo hike early in the morning, eager to try out a new trail. The weather was perfect, with the sun shining down on the thick forest. My backpack was full of supplies, and I felt ready for anything. As I walked deeper into the woods, the path got narrower and harder to see. The trees grew closer together, blocking out most of the sunlight. The air got cooler, and the sounds of the forest faded away, replaced by a creepy silence. My excitement turned to unease, but I kept going, determined to finish the hike. After a few hours, I reached a clearing with a small stream running through it. I decided to take a break and refill my water bottle. The water was crystal clear and cold, refreshing me instantly. Feeling better, I continued along the trail. Suddenly, I realized I had lost the path. The thick undergrowth and lack of clear markers left me confused. I checked my map and compass, trying to figure out where I was, but nothing seemed to match up. Panic started to set in as I wandered aimlessly, hoping to find the trail again. As the hours passed, I became more and more desperate. The sun was beginning to set, casting long shadows across the forest floor. My phone had no signal, and I had no way to call for help. I knew I had to stay calm and think logically. I decided to head in one direction hoping it would eventually lead me out. Night fell, and the forest became a dark and scary place. I could hear rustling in the bushes and the distant calls of animals. Every sound made my heart race. I stumbled over roots and rocks, my flashlight casting eerie shadows that played tricks on my mind. Just when I thought things couldn't get worse, I tripped and fell down a small hill, landing hard on my side. Pain shot through my leg and I realized I had twisted my ankle. I lay there for a moment, fighting back tears of frustration and fear. With great effort, I managed to stand up and limp forward. I knew I couldn't stay in one place. I had to keep moving. The pain was intense, but I pushed through it, determined to find my way out. Hours passed, and I was exhausted and in pain. My flashlight's beam was growing dim, and I knew the batteries wouldn't last much longer. Just as I was about to give up hope, I saw a faint light in the distance. With renewed energy, I made my way toward the light. As I got closer, I realized it was a cabin, its windows glowing warmly in the darkness. I hobbled to the door and knocked, hoping someone was home. The door opened, and a kind-looking older man stood there. He took one look at me and quickly brought me inside. He helped me to a chair and gave me some water. I explained what had happened, and he nodded, saying he knew the forest well and often helped lost hikers. The man called for assistance, and soon a team arrived to take me back to safety. As I sat in the cabin, wrapped in a warm blanket, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. I had faced my fears and made it through a terrifying ordeal. But as I sat there, something felt off. The man who helped me kept glancing out the window as if expecting something or someone. 
I followed his gaze and saw nothing but darkness outside. I thanked him and asked if he was worried about something. He just smiled and said, The forest is full of surprises. Sometimes, it's not the animals you need to worry about. A chill ran down my spine. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was out there, watching us. I left the cabin with the rescue team, but the man's words stayed with me. As we walked away, I glanced back at the cabin. The man was standing in the doorway, watching us leave. The darkness seemed to swallow him whole, and I couldn't tell if he was smiling or frowning. The forest had a way of playing tricks on your mind, but something about that man and his cabin felt all too real. Even now, safe at home, I can't help but wonder what or who is really out there in those woods. And what would have happened if I had stayed just a little longer? I decided to go hiking alone in the woods one early morning. The air was fresh and the forest was quiet except for the sounds of birds and the rustle of leaves. I felt at peace as I followed the narrow trail deeper into the woods. The path wound through thick trees, and after an hour, I noticed it was getting harder to follow. Small branches and leaves started to cover the way, but I kept going, sure I could find my way back. I enjoyed being alone, taking in the smell of pine and the sight of sunlight peeking through the trees. After a while, I came across a fallen tree blocking the path. I decided to climb over it and keep going, but as I did, I lost my footing and slipped, twisting my ankle. Pain shot through my leg, and I cursed under my breath. I sat down to check the injury, realizing it was too painful to put weight on it. I tried to remember the way back but realized I had wandered off the main trail. I reached for my phone to call for help, but there was no signal. Panic started to set in as the reality of my situation hit me. I was alone, hurt, and lost in the middle of the woods. I knew I had to stay calm. I remembered reading about how to survive in the wilderness. I looked around for anything that could help me. I found a sturdy branch to use as a crutch and began to limp back the way I came. Each step was painful, but I forced myself to keep moving. Hours passed, and the sun was starting to set. The forest seemed to close in around me, shadows stretching long across the ground. I felt a sense of dread growing with each passing minute. I began to doubt my direction, worried I was going deeper into the forest instead of out. Just as the last light of day was fading, I heard a distant sound, the faint hum of traffic. My spirits lifted, and I pushed myself to follow the noise. My ankle throbbed with every step, but the thought of reaching safety kept me going. Finally, I emerged from the dense forest onto a small road. I could see cars in the distance, and relief washed over me. I sat down by the roadside, exhausted but safe. A passing car stopped, and the driver offered to take me to the nearest town. As we drove away, I looked back at the forest, feeling a mix of relief and respect. I had underestimated the power of nature and the importance of being prepared. I vowed never to hike alone again without telling someone my plan and making sure I had the right equipment. But as we drove on, something strange happened. I felt a cold shiver run down my spine. I looked at the driver and noticed his eyes were fixed straight ahead, unblinking. The car's radio was off, yet I heard faint whispers coming from the back seat. My heart started to race again. I turned to look, but there was nothing there. When we finally reached the town, I got out of the car as quickly as I could, thanking the driver and hobbling toward the nearest building. As I glanced back, the car had vanished. No taillights, no sound, nothing. It was as if it had never been there. Even now, I can't shake the feeling that something followed me out of those woods. Something that shouldn't be here. I haven't been able to sleep well since. Every time I close my eyes I hear those whispers, growing louder like they're just waiting for the right moment to come back for me. One weekend, I decided to go hiking alone. I had heard about this trail from friends, saying it was really beautiful and not too hard. I left early in the morning, 
just as the sun was coming up, making the trees glow a warm, golden color. The first few miles were really nice. Birds were singing, and the forest was full of sounds of leaves rustling. I felt great, enjoying the peace and being close to nature. But as I walked deeper into the woods, the trail became harder to see. The trees were thicker here, and the path was narrower. I kept going, thinking it was just part of the adventure. After another hour, I noticed I hadn't seen any trail signs in a while. I pulled out my map, but it didn't help much. I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. My phone had no signal, and the GPS wasn't working. I started to feel anxious but told myself to stay calm. I decided to go back the way I came, hoping to find a familiar spot. The forest looked different now. Every tree seemed the same, and the sun was starting to set. The shadows grew longer, making it harder to see. I walked faster, trying to get out before it got dark. My heart was racing, not just from the effort but from the fear of being lost. Just as the last light of the day was disappearing, I saw something familiar, an old, worn-out sign pointing back to the main trail. I felt a huge sense of relief. I followed the sign, and after what felt like forever, I finally found the main trail. It was dark now, but the moon gave enough light to see. I walked quickly, not stopping until I saw the parking lot up ahead. When I reached my car, I felt a rush of gratitude and relief. I sat down for a moment, catching my breath and letting the fear fade away. As I drove home, tired but thankful, I kept thinking about the whole experience. It made me realize how important it is to be prepared and to respect nature. But just as I pulled into my driveway and turned off the car, I noticed something strange. There, in the dirt on the side of my car, were deep, claw-like scratches. I knew they weren't there before. A chill ran down my spine. I quickly got out of the car and rushed inside, locking the door behind me. I couldn't shake the feeling that something, or someone, had been watching me out there. I went to bed that night, but sleep didn't come easily. Even now, every time I think back to that day, I wonder what else might be lurking in those woods, unseen and waiting. It was supposed to be a simple camping trip. Just a weekend to get away from work and relax in nature. I packed my stuff, double-checked everything, and left early Saturday morning. The campsite was in a remote area, far from the city noise, and surrounded by thick woods. The first day went great. I set up my tent in a small open spot, close to a stream. I spent the day fishing, hiking, and enjoying the peace and quiet. As the sun began to set, I started a fire and cooked the fish I caught. The sky turned a beautiful shade of orange and pink, and I felt completely at peace. As night fell, the forest came alive with the sounds of nature. I heard the rustling of leaves, the chirping of crickets, and the occasional hoot of an owl. At first, it was calming, but as the night grew darker, the sounds seemed to change. I could hear twigs snapping and what sounded like heavy footsteps. I told myself it was probably just a deer or some other animal. I climbed into my tent and tried to sleep, but the noises outside kept me on edge. Every time I started to drift off, I'd hear something that would jolt me awake. Around midnight, I heard something different. It was a low growl, followed by more snapping branches. My heart raced as I tried to listen. The growling got closer, and I realized it was not just one animal. It sounded like a pack. My mind raced with thoughts of wolves or bears. I grabbed my flashlight and shone it outside the tent. The beam of light cut through the darkness, but I couldn't see anything. The growling continued, now accompanied by what sounded like shuffling and more snapping branches. I knew I couldn't stay in the tent. I grabbed my backpack, which had a small knife and some essential supplies, and quietly unzipped the tent. The growling was now just a few feet away. I slowly and cautiously stepped out, trying to make as little noise as possible. The moonlight was dim, but I could make out shapes moving in the distance. My instincts kicked in, and I started walking away from the noises, trying to find a path back to the car. 
My heart pounded in my chest, and my ears were tuned to every sound around me. I walked for what felt like hours, occasionally looking back to make sure I wasn't being followed. The growling had stopped, but I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. I finally found the dirt road that led back to the main road. Relief washed over me as I quickened my pace. As dawn approached, I saw my car parked where I had left it. I quickly unlocked it, threw my backpack in, and started the engine. The drive back was a blur. I didn't stop until I was far from the campsite, feeling a sense of safety return. Back home, I thought about the night and tried to make sense of what happened. I never figured out what was out there, but I was just glad I made it out safely. The trip had taken a turn I never expected. From that day on, I always made sure to camp in areas with other people around, and I never went too deep into the unknown. But the feeling of being watched never really went away. Even now, sometimes, when I'm alone in my house at night, I hear the same low growl in my dreams. And when I wake up, there's a strange feeling that something is outside, watching me through the window. I check every time, but there's never anything there. Just the memory of that night, and the lingering fear that whatever was out there might still be looking for me. It was supposed to be a fun weekend. My friends and I had planned this camping trip for months. We were excited to get away from the city, away from the noise and stress. The campsite was deep in the woods, far from any town. It seemed perfect. The first day was great. We set up our tents, gathered firewood, and spent the evening around the campfire, laughing and telling stories. As the sun set, the woods got really quiet. We didn't mind at first. It felt like we were truly away from everything. The night was cold, colder than I thought it would be. I woke up several times, hearing weird noises outside my tent. I told myself it was just animals and went back to sleep. The next morning, we found strange footprints around our campsite. They weren't from any animal we recognized. They were too big, too human-like. We tried to laugh it off, but there was a weird feeling in the air. As the day went on, we kept hearing odd sounds, twigs snapping, rustling leaves, distant footsteps. By evening, the feeling of being watched was too much. We decided to cut our trip short and leave the next morning. That night, I could hardly sleep. Every little noise made me jump. Around midnight I heard it clearly, footsteps slowly circling our tents. My heart raced. I lay still, barely breathing hoping that whoever or whatever it was would go away. Then I heard my friend's tent zipper. I thought it was just one of them getting out, but then there was a muffled scream. Panic surged through me. I grabbed my flashlight and knife, the only things I had for protection. Outside, I saw my friends huddled together, terrified. One of them pointed into the woods. My flashlight beam caught a figure disappearing into the trees. It was a man, scruffy and wild-looking. He had been watching us. We didn't waste any time. We packed up our essentials and left, leaving our tents behind. The hike back to the car was tense and silent, every sound making us jump. We finally reached our cars just as dawn was breaking. As we drove away, the tension began to lift. We were safe. We reported the incident to the nearest ranger station. They promised to look into it, but we knew we wouldn't be camping there again. It was a terrifying experience, but it made us more aware of the dangers in the wilderness. It wasn't ghosts or monsters, just a reminder that sometimes, the scariest things are real people with bad intentions. After we got home, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were still being watched. I double-checked my locks every night, and kept thinking about that man in the woods. The trip bonded us in a way few experiences could, but it left me with a fear I couldn't easily forget. A few weeks later, I got a call from one of my friends. He had gone back to pick up some gear we left behind. He found our tents slashed open and our supplies scattered. But the worst part, there were more footprints, leading away from our campsite and into the woods, as if the man had come back, looking for us.
I planned a relaxing weekend in the woods. I packed my tent, some food, and drove out for a solo camping trip. The drive was about two hours, winding through thick forests and narrow dirt roads. When I finally got there, the campsite was empty, just the way I liked it. Setting up camp was easy. I pitched my tent in a small clearing, with trees forming a natural wall around me. By late afternoon, I had a small fire going and was roasting some sausages. The quiet of the forest was just what I needed. As the sun started to set, I decided to take a short walk to stretch my legs. There was a path near my camp that led to a small stream about a mile away. The sound of running water was calming, and I spent a few minutes there, enjoying the peace. On my way back, I saw something strange. There were fresh footprints in the dirt, not mine, leading toward my campsite. My heart started to race. I hadn't seen anyone else around. I tried to ignore it, thinking maybe they were from earlier, but I knew that wasn't true. I hurried back to camp, only to find everything just as I had left it. I told myself I was just being paranoid and settled in for the night. Lying in my tent, I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig outside seemed louder in the dark. I kept telling myself it was just the wind or animals moving around. Around midnight, I finally fell asleep. A loud crack woke me up. I sat up in my sleeping bag, my heart pounding. The fire was out, and the campsite was pitch black. I strained my ears, trying to catch any sound. There it was again, a clear, deliberate footstep just outside my tent. Panic shot through me. I grabbed my flashlight and unzipped the tent as quietly as I could. Shining the light around, I saw nothing but trees and shadows. Then I heard the footsteps again, this time moving away. I couldn't see anyone, but I knew I wasn't alone. I made a quick decision. I packed up my important stuff, leaving most of my gear behind. I needed to get out of there. As I walked quickly toward my car, the feeling of being watched never left me. The journey felt endless, every crunch of leaves under my feet making me jump. When I finally reached my car, I threw my bag in and sped off without looking back. The relief of being on the road was huge. I drove straight home, not stopping until I was safe in my driveway. The next day, I told the park rangers what happened. They said they would check it out but didn't seem too worried. Weeks went by without any news. I never found out who or what was out there that night, but I learned my lesson. Camping alone in remote places was not worth the risk. The experience changed me. I still enjoy the outdoors, but now I always camp with friends and choose busy campsites. That night in the woods taught me to trust my instincts and never take my safety for granted. But sometimes, late at night when everything is quiet, I can't help but think about those footsteps. The rangers never found anything and no one else reported anything strange. It makes me wonder if whoever, or whatever, was out there is still out there, waiting for their next lone camper. I loved hiking, so when I got a few days off work, I decided to take a solo trip into the mountains. I found a small, remote cabin online that seemed perfect for a few days of peace and quiet. I packed my stuff, loaded up my car, and left early in the morning. The drive was long, twisting through thick forests and up steep, narrow roads. As I drove higher, the air grew cooler and fresher. After several hours, I finally reached the cabin. It was small and basic, surrounded by tall pines, with a great view of the valley below. It seemed perfect. After unpacking, I decided to explore the area. I hiked along the trails, enjoying the calm and quiet. As evening approached, I made my way back to the cabin, cooked a simple dinner, and sat outside to watch the sunset. The sky turned beautiful shades of orange and pink, and the world seemed to hold its breath in the fading light. When night came, I went inside and lit a fire in the old stone fireplace. I read for a while, then decided to get some sleep. The cabin was cozy and warm, and I fell asleep easily. In the middle of the night, I woke up. It was pitch black, and I felt a strange sense of unease. 
I listened carefully but heard nothing unusual. I brushed it off as just being unfamiliar with the sounds of the forest and tried to go back to sleep. But the feeling wouldn't go away. I lay there, my mind racing. I couldn't shake the sense that something was wrong. Finally, I decided to get up and check the cabin. I grabbed my flashlight and quietly walked through each room. Everything seemed normal. I checked the doors and windows. All were securely locked. Still, I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I stood in the middle of the living room, listening. The only sound was the wind whispering through the trees outside. Then I heard it, a faint rustling, like something moving just outside the cabin. My heart pounded in my chest as I slowly approached the window. I shone the flashlight into the darkness but saw nothing. I turned off the light and waited. Moments later, I heard the rustling again, followed by a soft, almost imperceptible scratching at the door. I felt a rush of fear. Someone or something was definitely out there. I grabbed a heavy fireplace poker and cautiously approached the door. I held my breath, listening. The scratching continued, more insistent now. I took a deep breath and yanked the door open, brandishing the poker. My flashlight beam cut through the darkness, revealing a small, terrified raccoon standing on the porch. It froze for a moment, then scampered off into the woods. Relief washed over me, and I couldn't help but laugh at myself. I had been so scared, imagining all sorts of terrible things, and it turned out to be just a raccoon. I closed the door and put the poker back by the fireplace. I realized how easily fear could cloud my mind, making me see danger where there was none. I went back to bed and finally managed to fall asleep. The next morning, the sun was shining brightly, and the cabin seemed even more beautiful in the daylight. I packed up my things, feeling a sense of accomplishment for facing my fears. As I drove back down the mountain, I reflected on the experience. The mountains were still as big and mysterious as ever, but now I felt more at peace with their wildness. The cabin had taught me a valuable lesson, sometimes. The only thing we have to fear is our own imagination. Later, as I parked my car back home and started unpacking, I found something that sent chills down my spine. In the trunk of my car was a muddy footprint. It was much too large to belong to the raccoon, and I had cleaned my boots before packing them away. Someone, or something, had been much closer to me than I had realized. One weekend I decided to go hiking alone in the mountains. I always loved the peace and quiet that came with being in nature. I chose a trail known for its beautiful views and tough paths. I packed my backpack with water, snacks, and a map, ready for an adventure. The first few hours were perfect. The weather was cool, and the trail was empty. I could hear birds singing and leaves rustling in the wind. The path went through thick forests, and opened up to amazing views of the valley below. I felt alive and free, far from the noise and stress of everyday life. As I climbed higher, the trail became steeper and rockier. I had to watch my step carefully. At one point I slipped on loose gravel and almost fell, but managed to catch myself. The narrow path hugged the side of the mountain, with a sheer drop on one side. I took a deep breath and continued, determined to reach the top. About halfway up, I noticed the sky getting darker. Thick clouds rolled in, blocking out the sun. The wind picked up, and it started to drizzle. I put on my rain jacket and kept going. I didn't want to turn back now after coming so far. The trail was getting harder to see, and the rain made the rocks slippery. Suddenly, I heard a rumble of thunder. It echoed off the mountains, making the ground seem to shake. I knew I had to find shelter quickly. I remembered passing a small cave a little way back and decided to head there. The rain was coming down hard now, and lightning flashed across the sky. I made it to the cave just as the storm hit full force. The wind howled outside, and the rain poured down in sheets. I huddled inside, trying to stay warm. My heart was pounding, and I felt a mix of fear and relief. I was safe for now but the storm showed no sign of stopping. I waited in the cave for what felt like hours. The storm raged on, and the daylight began to fade. 
I knew it would be dangerous to hike back down in the dark and the storm, so I decided to spend the night in the cave. I found a dry spot, wrapped myself in my jacket, and tried to get some rest. The night was long and cold. I could hear animals moving outside, and every sound seemed louder in the darkness. I barely slept, my mind racing with thoughts of what could go wrong. But as the first light of dawn broke, the storm finally passed. The sky cleared, and the sun began to rise. I stepped out of the cave, feeling exhausted but grateful to be alive. The world looked fresh and new, washed clean by the rain. I made my way back down the mountain slowly, carefully navigating the still wet trail. When I finally reached the base, I felt a sense of relief. As I drove home, I thought about the experience. I had learned the importance of being prepared for anything and respecting the power of nature. But something still bothered me. Just before leaving the cave, I had noticed strange marks on the walls, almost like claw marks, and a faint, musty smell that didn't seem like it came from any animal I knew. The thought sent chills down my spine. I tried to brush it off as my imagination running wild, but deep down, I knew something was out there, something I couldn't explain. And the idea of it watching me through the stormy night, waiting just outside the cave, left me uneasy. I might have made it back safely, but the mountains had shown me a glimpse of their darker side, one that I wouldn't soon forget. I decided to go hiking alone in the mountains to get some peace and take a break from my busy life. The trail was quiet, and the fresh air felt nice as I walked deeper into the woods. The path was easy to follow, and I felt sure of myself even though the shadows grew longer as the day went on. After a few hours, I noticed the trail was getting harder to see. At first, I wasn't worried. I thought I could easily find my way back. But then, I took a wrong turn and ended up in a place I didn't recognize. I checked my phone, but there was no signal. I tried to retrace my steps, but everything, the trees, the rocks, looked the same. I started to panic when I realized I was lost. The sun was setting, and I didn't have a flashlight. I began to walk faster, hoping to find the main trail before it got completely dark. As I hurried through the forest, I tripped and fell scraping my knee badly. The pain was sharp, and my heart raced as I got back up, more careful now. The sounds of the forest seemed louder in the fading light, and every rustle made me jump. I kept walking, trying to stay calm and remember what to do in a situation like this. I knew I had to find a way to signal for help, but the thick trees blocked out any view of the sky. I gathered some dry leaves and sticks and managed to start a small fire, hoping someone would see the smoke. Hours passed, and the fire started to die. I wrapped my jacket tightly around me, shivering in the cold night air. Just as I was about to give up hope, I saw a faint light in the distance. With my last bit of energy, I moved toward it. The light grew brighter, and soon, I stumbled into a clearing where I saw a group of campers. They saw me and rushed over, helping me to their camp. They gave me food, water, and bandaged my knee. I felt a wave of relief wash over me as they assured me I would be safe with them. We spent the night there, and in the morning, they helped me find my way back to the main trail. As I finally reached the trailhead, I thanked the campers and promised myself I'd be more careful next time. But as I walked back to my car, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. When I got to the parking lot I saw my car. But there, written in the dirt on the back window, was a message that hadn't been there before. I've been watching you. Chills ran down my spine. I looked around, but there was no one in sight. I quickly got into my car and drove away, my heart pounding. That hike taught me the importance of being prepared and cautious, but it also left me with a haunting feeling. I realized that while the wilderness is beautiful, it can also be a very lonely and eerie place, where you might not be as alone as you think.
The sun was just starting to set when I began my hike up the old mountain trail. I had been looking forward to this all week, needing the quiet and peace that only nature could give. The trail was steep and rocky, but the views were worth it. The trees rustled in the wind, and I could hear a hawk calling from far away. I felt alive, my senses buzzing from the exercise and the beauty around me. As I climbed higher, the path got narrower and more overgrown. The shadows grew longer, and the forest started to feel eerie and strange. I stumbled a few times but kept going, determined to reach the top before dark. I wasn't worried. I had a map, a flashlight, and enough food and water to last me until morning. Suddenly, I heard a noise behind me, a rustling in the bushes. I stopped and listened, my heart pounding. It could be a deer, I told myself, or maybe a rabbit. But the sound was too steady, too close. I turned around, peering into the growing darkness, but saw nothing. I shrugged it off and continued, a little faster now. A few minutes later, I heard it again, this time closer. My mind raced with possibilities. Maybe it was another hiker, but I hadn't seen anyone else all day. I picked up my pace, the trail becoming trickier as the light faded. I could feel my pulse in my throat, my breath coming in short, sharp gasps. Then I saw it, a flash of movement out of the corner of my eye. I whipped around, and there, barely visible in the twilight, was a figure. They were standing perfectly still, watching me. My heart leaped into my throat. I didn't know what to do. I could run, but the trail was too dangerous in the dark, and I didn't want to risk falling. I could confront them, but I didn't know if they were friendly or not. I took a deep breath and started walking again, faster this time. I didn't hear any more sounds, but I could feel eyes on me. The trail was barely visible now, the trees closing in around me. I reached for my flashlight, but my hands were shaking so badly I could barely hold it steady. I turned it on and swept the beam behind me, but the figure was gone. I pressed on, my mind racing. I had to reach the top. There would be a clearing there, a place where I could see anyone coming. I stumbled and fell, scraping my hands and knees on the rocky ground. I picked myself up and kept going, driven by fear. Finally, I broke through the trees and into the clearing at the top. I collapsed onto the ground, gasping for breath, my heart racing. I looked around, but there was no sign of the figure. I was alone, but the feeling of being watched hadn't left me. I stayed awake all night, my flashlight clutched in my hand, listening to every sound, every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig. As dawn broke, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. I packed up my things and started back down the trail, moving quickly and carefully. When I reached the bottom, I felt a huge weight lift off my shoulders. I was safe. I didn't look back, and I didn't stop until I reached my car. I sat in my car for a few minutes, catching my breath and trying to calm down. Just as I was about to start the engine, I glanced up at the trailhead. There, standing in the early morning light, was the figure. They were watching me, perfectly still. My heart pounded in my chest. I quickly started the car and drove away, not daring to look back. I never did find out who or what had followed me that night, but I knew I would never hike that trail alone again. The mountains were beautiful, but they were also wild and unpredictable, hiding secrets that were better left alone. Even now, when I think back to that hike, I can still feel those eyes on me, and it sends a chill down my spine. I decided to go camping alone in the woods to clear my mind. It was something I had been thinking about for weeks, and finally, I packed my stuff and headed out on a Friday afternoon. The weather was perfect, and the trail to my favorite spot was just as peaceful as I remembered. By evening, I had my tent set up and a small fire going. I sat there, enjoying the quiet, the sounds of nature all around me. As the night grew darker, I felt a sense of calm something I hadn't felt in a long time. Around midnight, I was lying in my sleeping bag, trying to fall asleep. Suddenly, I heard rustling outside my tent. 
I brushed it off as an animal, maybe a raccoon or deer. But then the noises got louder, closer, and more intentional. My heart started to pound. I sat up, trying to listen carefully. It sounded like footsteps. I grabbed my flashlight and unzipped the tent just enough to peek outside. The light cut through the darkness, but I saw nothing. The footsteps had stopped. I waited, flashlight in hand, every nerve in my body on edge. Minutes passed, which felt like hours. Just when I started to think it was my imagination, I heard it again, this time, right by my tent. I could see the outline of something, someone, moving. Panic set in. I fumbled for my pocket knife, my only means of protection. The footsteps circled my tent, slow and steady. I felt trapped. There was no way I could run away in the dark forest. My mind raced with thoughts, none of them good. Suddenly, the footsteps stopped. The silence was so intense. I held my breath, waiting. Then, out of nowhere, there was a loud crash as something hit the side of my tent. I screamed, slashing wildly with my knife through the tent wall. I heard a grunt and then the sound of hurried footsteps running into the woods. My heart was pounding so hard I thought it might burst. I stayed like that, knife in hand, for what felt like forever, listening to the sounds of the forest, waiting for any sign of the person coming back. But nothing happened. At first light, I came out of my tent, tired and on edge. I saw the side of my tent was slashed, and there were drops of blood on the ground. I quickly packed my things and made my way back to the trailhead, constantly looking over my shoulder. When I finally reached my car, I felt a huge sense of relief. I drove straight to the nearest town and told the local ranger about what happened. They said they would look into it, but I knew I wouldn't be returning to that spot again. The experience shook me, but it also made me realize the importance of being prepared and aware in the wild. I was lucky to have escaped without being hurt, but I learned a valuable lesson about the unexpected dangers that can happen when you're alone in the wilderness. As I left the ranger's office, I glanced at the woods one last time. A chill ran down my spine. There was no way to know who or what had been out there with me that night. But one thing was clear. I was no longer alone in my thoughts. The woods had a dark secret, and it had found me. And as I drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that something, or someone, was still watching from the shadows, waiting for the next unsuspecting camper. Last summer, I decided to go camping alone to clear my head. I picked a spot deep in the woods, far away from the noise of the city. During the day, the place was perfect. Tall trees, a clear lake, and birds singing. I set up my tent, gathered some firewood, and enjoyed the peace and quiet. But when night came, everything changed. The animal sounds got louder, and the darkness felt like it was closing in on me. I started a fire and tried to relax, but I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. I told myself it was just because I was alone. After dinner, I sat by the fire, listening to the crackling wood. Suddenly, I heard a noise in the bushes behind me. My heart started racing, but I told myself it was probably just a small animal. The rustling continued, and I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me. I grabbed my flashlight and pointed it toward the noise. The light showed nothing but trees and shadows. I tried to calm down and went back to the fire. A few minutes later, I heard footsteps. They were slow and heavy, getting closer panic set in as I stood up and shined my flashlight into the darkness again. This time, I saw the faint shape of someone moving between the trees. Fear took over. I grabbed my phone to call for help but had no signal. My mind raced, trying to figure out what to do. I decided to pack my things and leave as quietly as I could. As I moved, the footsteps seemed to follow me, always staying just out of sight. I put out the fire and quickly packed my tent. The footsteps got louder and more frequent. I couldn't take it anymore. I threw my backpack on and started walking fast toward the trail. The sounds behind me kept up, matching my pace. I broke into a run, 
adrenaline and fear pushing me forward. After what felt like forever, I finally reached the parking lot where my car was. I jumped in, locked the doors, and started the engine. As I drove away, I looked in the rearview mirror but saw nothing but the dark, empty road behind me. When I got back to town, I reported what happened to the local police. They said they'd check it out but didn't find anything unusual in the area. I never found out who or what was in the woods that night. A few weeks later, I was going through my camping gear when I found a note stuffed in my backpack. It simply read, I was just making sure you made it out. Chills ran down my spine. I never went camping alone again. That night in the woods is a memory that still haunts me, a reminder of how close I came to something, or someone, that night. Camping with my friends was supposed to be a chill weekend away. We picked a spot deep in the woods, far from any town. The first night was nice, with the campfire crackling and crickets chirping. We told stories, laughed, and looked at the stars. The second night was different. After a day of hiking and exploring, we got back to our campsite for dinner. As the sun went down, it got colder. We gathered around the fire to stay warm. That's when we heard it a soft rustling in the bushes. At first, we thought it was just an animal, but the sound got louder and wouldn't stop. We pointed our flashlights into the darkness but saw nothing. The noise stopped, and we laughed nervously, trying to calm down. An hour later, as we were getting ready for bed, the sound came back. This time, we heard faint footsteps in the distance. It sounded like more than one person, slowly walking around our campsite fear set in. We stuck close to each other, our eyes scanning the dark. The footsteps stopped again, and there was a moment of complete silence. Then we heard whispers, low soft murmurs, like people talking far away. We decided to check it out. A few of us went to look while the others stayed to watch the campsite. We moved slowly through the trees, our flashlights making weird shadows. After a few minutes, we found nothing and went back only to find our friends wide-eyed and scared. They had heard the whispers too, and they seemed to be getting closer. We spent the rest of the night scared, unable to sleep, listening to the forest and the occasional rustle. At dawn, we packed up quickly and left, deciding it was best to cut our trip short. As we made our way back to the main road, the feeling of being watched never left us. It wasn't until we reached our cars that we could relax. Thinking about it later, we realized how close we had come to danger. Whether it was other campers, hunters, or something else, we never found out. But one thing stuck with us. We had been lucky to leave the woods unharmed, with only a story to tell and a lesson learned. But sometimes, late at night, I still hear those whispers. And I wonder if we really did leave those woods behind us, or if something followed us home, waiting for the right moment to make itself known. As the sun began to set, I found myself walking through the forest. The path was narrow, the trees tall and close together, making the shadows long and dark. My steps were steady, crunching the dry leaves and twigs beneath my feet. The air was cool, carrying the smell of pine and dirt. Even though it was getting darker, I felt surprisingly calm. I kept walking deeper into the woods, and the path became harder to see. The sounds of birds faded away, replaced by the occasional rustling of leaves. I felt sure of where I was going. Suddenly, I saw something to the side, a small, overgrown trail that I hadn't noticed before. Curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to follow it. The trail twisted and turned, taking me further away from the main path. This part of the forest was quieter, almost too quiet. I told myself it was just my mind playing tricks but I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, was watching me. The trees seemed to close in, their branches reaching out like bony fingers. After what felt like hours, I realized I was lost. Panic started to rise, 
but I forced myself to stay calm. I took a deep breath and tried to retrace my steps. The light was fading fast, and I knew I needed to find my way out before it got completely dark. I moved forward, looking around for anything familiar. The forest seemed endless, every tree and rock looking the same. My heart was pounding, and I walked faster, hoping to find the main path again. Just when I thought I would be trapped in the forest for the night, I saw a faint light in the distance. Relief washed over me as I hurried towards it. The light grew brighter, and soon I found myself at the edge of the forest, where the trees opened up to a clearing. There, in the clearing, was a small cabin with a light on the porch. I approached carefully, feeling both hopeful and nervous. As I got closer, I noticed smoke rising from the chimney and the warm glow from the windows. It seemed like a safe place in the middle of the dark, scary forest. I knocked on the door, and after a moment, it opened. An old man with kind eyes stood there, looking at me with surprise and concern. He invited me in without hesitation, offering me a place to rest and some hot tea. He listened as I told him about my experience, nodding as I spoke. The cabin was cozy, filled with the smell of burning wood and the warmth of a crackling fire. The old man's presence was comforting, and I felt a sense of safety I hadn't felt in hours. He explained that he often left the light on for lost travelers, knowing how easy it was to get lost in the forest. I stayed there for the night, grateful for the kindness of a stranger. The next morning, the old man showed me a clear path that would lead me back to the main trail. As I walked away from the cabin, I felt thankful. The forest, which had seemed so frightening the night before, now felt different. It was still vast and wild, but I knew I had found a place of refuge within it. As I walked further, I turned back to look at the cabin one last time. To my shock, it was gone. The clearing was empty, with no sign of the cabin or the old man. My heart raced, and a cold shiver ran down my spine. Had I imagined it all? Was the cabin ever real? The forest seemed to close in around me once more, and I hurried to find the main path. Finally, I found the main trail and made my way out of the forest. But the memory of that night stayed with me, and the feeling of being watched never left. Even now, I can't shake the eerie feeling that something in those woods was following me, and I wonder if it's still out there, waiting for the next lost traveler.